Why be prepared? Why have a what if plan? Why whip? Why, why, why? Yeah. Okay, man. So this is just a continuation of uh, my failed bug outs. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now I'm sitting in my bug out machine. Um, yeah. Because bugging out, it's for the movies. All right, so man, let's chat about it and go through more of it. There's a, a, a whole lot to come. And just my head, um, because uh, I see that, A, some people are into stuff and people want to be prepared. Um, some people don't know what being prepared is about. Um, there's a bit of a stigma to being a prepper, but that's all American stuff. Here in our country, it's different. Or is it? Maybe it's different, but the same. Aren't we all the same? We just have our own issues wherever we are. So everywhere is different, but I'm sure it's all the same anyway. And the grass is never greener on the other side. And if it is, it's because there's more poop on that side, maybe. Anyway, so why be prepared? Well, um, some of you know me, uh, so maybe you don't. I uh, subscribe to the Warrior Poet Society. Yeah, um, awesome guys. The, yeah, man. One of the Warrior Poets, uh, Mr. John Lovell, um, he believes it's because no nation sits secure. Hmm. Mr. John Lovell of the Warrior Poet Society. He has a whole lot of cool stuff to say. Go check him out if uh, if you're into that. Um, yeah, what a cool dude. What a cool family. What Like, he's just really hilarious. Um, and he believes to you need to be prepared because no nation sits secure. Hmm. Yeah. So let's look at our place. Our current climate um, is definitely one of uncertainty. Right now, where I sit out here in the bush, the only thing I know that's certain is that I'll get into my cavity and I'll start it and it'll start. I know that for certain. Yeah. Um, so our current climates, yes, be what's happening out there in the big bad world, in the cities and in the towns of, of South Africa, I don't really know. I know there are huge wealth gaps. Yeah. There's a big gap between those that have and those that don't. And every day the gap is getting bigger and people in the middle are falling into those that don't. Not many people are falling into those that have. Yeah? Unemployment is starting to skyrocket. Huge unemployment. Unemployment is becoming quite big. The government's trying to hide it, but it's massive. And there is definitely a growing dis ease with the rule of law. What do I mean by that? Just look around. Check it all the the look at all the writings. Look at all the people pushing for free land. And what are they asking of the government? They're not asking, they're demanding. Have a look at our country. The people with nothing are demanding. They're demanding more, but they aren't prepared to do anything with what they have. So that's a whole different story, you know? But no nation sits secure. Just quickly, if you look at the United States of America, they're wobbling a bit, you know? Respect to them. Another dude I wanna give a shout out to is Bear from Bear Independent. Dot com yeah go check out again the bear nation bearindependent.com me i like to be a black scout survival warrior poet in a bear nation so go check those two guys out warrior poet society and bearindependent.com just type it in warrior poet society bearindependent.com they'll pop up go follow them you understand what i'm saying anyway bear from bear independent he believes he says being prepared, you know, is a physical insurance against potential chaos. I quite like it. Physical insurance against potential chaos. Yeah. Whew. Let's have a look. Here, where we are, all our SOEs, state-owned enterprises, have failed. Every government-run business in South Africa is failed. Failing, failed, I think only one that's maybe operating is SARS. And I 
could be lying, but every other one is bankrupt. Bankrupt. Do you know that not even the government can pay its own people? They haven't paid tax in forever. Did you know that? Okay. Physical insurance against potential chaos. We are fast becoming a third world country. You know, South Africans have sat in this luxury for the last 20, 30 years, blah, 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 of kind of being the thing of Africa. We, we, we've been a second world country for most of my life. Actually, all my life, I believe South Africa has been a second world country. I've traveled to many third world countries. Um, yeah, and we fast becoming that third world country. Those countries I traveled to, that I guided to, took people to. Yeah, yeah, we become in those countries. Can you believe it? It starts with infrastructure, the breakdown of the infrastructure. When the infrastructure starts to break down and the government is not keeping up to standards, things go down third world. Yeah, what is the, one of the biggest issues with the third world? Infrastructure, the roads. South Africa has the best roads on the planet, phenomenal roadways. And slowly they are falling apart. There are towns in this country where the roads, there's better roads in Mozambique. All right. We are fast becoming a third world country where the rule of law is slow and one sided. You know? And I'm, I'm not talking rubbish, I'm not, bleh. just look around, man. The rule of law is slow. Our police officers, our police force, in dealing with crime is slow man and it's also one-sided there's a lot of stuff about uh, corruption politics go check it out another cool like Ramon yeah a South African from the morning shot go Google morning shot check him out he does a live little 10 minute news brief every morning just go listen to his news briefs I ain't talking rubbish here just go check what he has to say you yeah? know it's all out there for you yeah, okay, check, I'm, I'm talking, I do have notes, because I want to, there's a lot to say, and it quite, it's important. Just this year, just this year, petrol is at an all-time high. So, prior to us getting our cabbie, when I was borrowing cars, and using cars, and renting cars, and doing a whole lot of stuff, fuel's always a thing, and I had always been budgeting on 16 or 17 rand a litre. Especially when we got this one. Just, it was giving me a bit of a, a, a buffer. So now, I don't know, I think we're on 17 rand a litre. Hey! Electricity. By the end of this year, electricity from ESCOM, an SOE, a state-owned enterprise, will have increased 50% by the end of this year. Three increases over this year. Don't come in. Uh, please, man, go check out. I'm not talking rubbish. You know? And every time there's a hiccup or there's an issue, there's an issue, we load share it. Okay? So apparently we have had more load shedding last year in the history of load shedding. And load shedding started in 2007, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. My boy, who's now 12, has, was born into load shedding. Can you believe that? <laughs> what? Anyway, the cost of basic goods are slowly increasing. And most in the corporate world have taken reductions in salaries due to this pandemic. Okay, so these are facts. I'm not talking from my bum. Yeah, I know people, a lot of people in the corporate world, because I'm not in the corporate world. I guide people in the corporate world. People in the corporate world pay me their, their money to go do cool things with them. Do you, do you know? So that's my business. Um, yeah, and a lot of people have taken a reduction in salary, taken reduction somewhere, but things are becoming more expensive, including the basics. You know? So just a quick recap. Why be prepared? Well, just look around. No nation sits secure. And it's not a, but as a nation, as a country, we are not secure. And it's not about you and me or him or her or who or what or why or anything. It's about the bigger people, the people that are running the country, the people that have the say and the inputs and the, we are just pawns. We are just, we are just the cogs in a big wheel, you know? We can make a difference. We do have the power, but that's not in this conversation. Yeah. What I'm wanting to talk about is how can we make a power for ourselves so that when our nation 
starts to rumble and things aren't working, we as a people are okay. Yeah? Because, man, in my circle of friends, not a lot of people are talking about what if. Yeah? Everybody doesn't believe it's going to happen. What's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. But wouldn't you want some physical insurance against potential chaos? Like, potentially, there could be issues in this country. Could you imagine, like, food running out? Yeah, I saw a, I saw a thing today, um, a, a news clip, that there's more people starving than, uh, than, than the government realized or knew about, or like millions. Maybe 20 million, I think, was the number. Anyway, I will confirm it. We'll do something about it. But does that even sound legit to you? Okay. Yes. Let's just quick recap. So, people are taking reduction in salary. Things are becoming more expensive. Even my business, even our business is slowing down because people's expendable cash is less. Everybody we know, everybody in circle, everybody that keeps us going this, our circle in my world, because I'm just talking from experience, yeah, is getting less. And we are really an insignificant circle in the bigger circles in Gauteng, you know. The problem is we're all paying to be in the system. Though. The system is slowly winding down. The system is slowly winding down. Yeah, it's nothing like coffee in the bush, eh? Even if it's black, black and sweet. Yeah. The system's winding down. We don't want to believe it. And we're still paying to be in it. You know? We're paying the education, education for our children, because we believe that that's what's got to happen. You know, we believe that the, we've got to educate our kids. Absolutely. But maybe not in the system you think. And if you, if you don't believe me, just go look at our schooling system and what's happened in the past 40 years. And then go look what's currently happening in the American schooling system, currently. Um, and then if you want, go look in the Western world, into Europe, and go see what's been happening in their education for a while. Um, but again, I'm just talking now, here, now, in my experience. Because when I went to school, pretty much everything I learned was a lie. Yeah? Pretty much everything I grew up knowing is a lie. Yeah, man, so we're paying education because we believe our kids need to be educated in a system that is slowing down, that is failing, the great reset. They're going to reset the system, but we still want to send our children through the education system that they want to reset. Yeah, still paying tax. Do you know the government, our government, hasn't paid tax? Do you know they're broke? They haven't paid tax? They've taken PAYE from their employees, but they haven't paid the tax. Pharma, big pharma. Again, I'm going to go back there. You guys take medication. We're all spending money on big pharma. Who's getting rich all of a sudden? Again, yesterday I read that now the new top billionaires are all the oaks in the pharmaceutical industry. <laughs> really? Go figure. And big business. You know, who's winning? The big guys. Who's losing? Us, the small guys. Why? Well, again, in our country, us South Africans, we can't work together. We can't. We can't. It's so weird. Anyway. So, yeah, man, all it's doing is creating more control. In South Africa, this system's going to implode. Soon, this system in this country is going to implode. Yeah? Even if we keep driving it. Yeah, our system is going to implode. And not in 10 years' time. No, no. But that's a whole different topic. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about this, you, me, us. What are we doing? How do we, how do we deal with this? How do I be prepared? How do you be prepared? Without changing your lifestyle, without messing around, just carrying on. Yeah? How do you de-stress the system? How do we de-stress the system? Yeah? How do we slowly take our dependence off of the system? It's the only way to de-stress the system. The less you depend on the system, the better you are. Yeah? 
and think about it. Times are changing. The Great Reset. Have you not heard of the Great Reset? Yeah? Times are changing. By slowly taking away our dependence, our dependence, we start small and we grow. So how many of you got veg gardens? I know a whole lot of you have. Nice one. Thank you. Yeah? So that's my first one. Actually, I have seven steps. Seven steps to de-stress the system and make your souls better prepared. Why? Because if you're better prepared, psychologically, you're better able to handle the stress. And that's a whole other thing we're going to talk about later because I see there is a stress issue coming. A lot of people are freaking out mentally. People are not handling what's happening. And I don't even know what's happening because I live out in the bush. So my first road trip in my car has been <laughs> into the bush. So I haven't even been to town. Yeah. So first step is start a small garden. Just grow something. Don't care what it is. Grow one thing, grow two things. Here in South Africa, it's winter time. Yeah. I'm planting lentils. Lentils. Oh, oh. Yeah. Uh, just plant anything. Plant something. Plant something, even if you keep it in your house. Keep it in the sun, semi-shade, plant something. Cool. Step two. Start a small solar system. Yeah. ESCOM, 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 state-owned enterprise, yeah, state-owned company run by the government, ESCOM is messing around, they're splitting up into three parts, They've this has been on the cards for I don't know how long, Pravin Gordon brought it up, Young's back, he got shut down for it, now they're doing it, they're splitting over the budget for distribution and da 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 for one third and then the two thirds is going for the one that's generation, generation distribution and something else, whatever man. They say that it's going to be here for a long time. There's crazy oaks coming from Cuba. There's weird stories going on out there. Whether you believe them or not, it's irrelevant. The bottom line is soon ESCOM's going to be messing around more and we're going to start having six hours without power. Yeah, 12 hours without power. Maybe only six hours with power. It can happen. Yeah, that can be stressful. That can close businesses. That can do a whole lot. So just start slowly. Get a solar system, a small one, and then just take your lights and all the lights in your house, run all the lights in your house onto your solar, your batteries. And now all of a sudden you're a little bit less dependent on ESCOM. Yeah? And I promise you, the money that you put into that, it will be well spent. It'll cost maybe a thousand, a thousand five hundred rand. Think about it. Yeah? Those little things. Do you have a night light next to your bed that you like to read with? You know, do you have a light in the bathroom that you keep on all night? Change those things to batteries. Have battery lights. You know, start little. Eventually, you'll get more and more and more. And then before you know it, half your house is running on batteries. Hmm. Step three. Store and rotate water. You know, okay. We're going to talk about this because I'm going to do a whole thing. The different steps I'm going to work on. Storing and rotating your water. Yeah, and the uses of water. Number one, we should not be drinking water from our taps. Okay, let me say that again. We should not be drinking water from our taps. Okay, why? Because you don't want to know what those pipes look like. The last few months I've been doing some plumbing work. Ooh, ooh, I wish I kept a sample. Actually, I'll. Sh no. Yo, I'll try to find for the water thingy. But yeah, the pipes that we are drinking water, our water from, mm -mm -mm. we're going to make ourselves sick if we're not doing it already. Man, there's many conspiracies out there putting fluoride in the water. The chemicals they use in the water, it's not good, man. Who knows what's going on in Gauteng's water? You know that our water is polluted, eh? I uh, took a drive with my family yesterday. We're in this beautiful reserve and uh, we took a, a drive down to the Yakske River where it enters into our reserve. It smells like washing powder. Yeah, so that runs through Randberg, through uh, two parts of uh, an industrial part of the, uh, our part of the city. Yeah, 
Yeah, you know, it's been like that for youngs. When I was a lot younger, I used to fish that river for the for the scabies. Yeah, and the and the what are they? Catfish. I haven't seen. Uh, look, I haven't looked since we've been back, but there was a time where I was down at the rivers, didn't see them anymore. So, yeah, water, water, you can't run to the river to collect water. Yeah. So, you should be buying bottled water for human consumption, for drinking. Buy bottled water for drinking, you can use the tap water for cooking. Why? Because you should be boiling it. Yeah. So, use the tap water for everything else. But for drinking, for, for, for your consumption, a glass of water, it should come from bottled water. I am not don't know what the best is, but you got less likely to get sick drinking bottled water than you have from tap water. Yeah? And then your tap water, you can refill your 5 liter containers, your 5 liter bottles that you buy. Yeah, because this is what we do. We have 5 liter or 7 liter or sometimes 10 liter bottles. You know? we, we drink bottled water, we cook from borehole water. Okay, so we are a bit more fortunate than because we are, are not on uh, on 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 Gauteng water on on the grid water. However, our water has an issue. Our borehole water it has a lot of lime, a lot of calcium. Forever having to uh, clean like our kettle and and it's been like this for a while. So uh, yeah, we are very much aware that it's not ideal. All right. So yeah. Drinking water, you drink from bottled water and then store water from the tap into the same bottles. Yeah? And if you, those bottles, I just want to state, you can store water for like three years if it's in a dark, dark dry place out of direct sunlight. Yeah? Uh, so just rotate water every now and again. If you, yeah, you can use the water into your toilet. So for one day, instead of flushing the toilet, use your bottle water and then fill it up with tap water. It's kind of the same thing. You can rotate if you want, or you can run a bath and use your bottled water. There's a hundred ways you can rotate your water, recycle your water, you can put it out into the garden. Water never goes to waste. And yeah, so it is always a good thing to stockpile water. And also, in a, in a, in a way, you need to use your supplies or your preparedness you're not really going to qualm about how great the water is so if it did come from a tap and it's been sitting for six months and you need to drink it you're going to drink it and be okay you're not going to die okay that's kind of our logic um, we have stored water that is for like a week or something in case things go bad um, we don't have a long-term supply, but if I needed to, you know, worst case scenario, I'd rather drink that water than drinking the water that I've dug a well out of in the ground and it's dirty and I have to filter it and boil it and filter it and boil it and, you know what I mean? I could rather drink tap water. So, all right. Store and rotate water uses. Step three, step four. Okay, step four, start a small storage of food. Start a small storage of food. And just the basics. Rice, mini meal, flour, cereal, pasta. Yeah. Again, you're drinking five liter waters. You're buying five liter containers. Yeah. So just take those things and uh, fill them up. One, one, one. You're good to go. Store it away. Forget about it for a year. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Recycle it. Or, if you're not into that, you think I'm a bit loopy, at least sit down and take five meals, one week's worth of food. You know, five meals and put it in a cupboard somewhere. Plan five meals, you're going camping or something. Just humor me, you know, put it in a cupboard. At least if the world goes crazy, because it's gonna for a little time, you know, at least you got one or two days worth of, five days worth of food. Don't panic, you know. And step five, invest in your own security. Hmm. Invest in your own security. What does that mean? Does it mean run out and buy a gun? <laughs> I don't own a gun. No, it doesn't mean that. But maybe it means running out and spending some money and going on a situational awareness course. Uh, maybe a close contact uh, defense course. Um, 
yeah, maybe a kung fu karate chuck kill people course. I don't know. Spend a little bit of money. Educate yourself on how to be better prepared to defend yourself. That's a good one. Um, or uh, look at your alarm system at your home. Do you rely on your landlord or your neighbor or the this or the that or, or do you rely on yourself? And if you don't rely on yourself, maybe look at putting things in place that you put in place, that you're going to rely on. You know, so maybe buy a camera that can move around, that connects to your phone. And you can put it around in different places and record what happens in your garden or outside your window or something at night. Yeah, Maybe buy one or two little sensors and put them up on your windows, your bathroom window and your bedroom window. Yeah, so that if the window is moved to something, a little alarm goes off. Maybe put a cool sensor outside your back door. You know, a motion sensor that'll go off. Why? Just so that you have set your boundaries, your personal little boundaries. I know we all rely on, we here on a farm, we rely on uh, armed response. Yeah, they're pretty on the ball. And when they arrive here, man, they arrive here... I'd like to say guns blazing, but pretty much lights, cameras, action, guns, no triggers. You know, guns blazing. <laughs> they don't come quietly. So, you know, I'm sure we all have armed response here in South Africa. But I'm not talking about relying on others. I'm talking about de-stressing the system. Relying on yourself. Why? Because when I put little things in place, it builds my own confidence. Makes me a little bit more sure. All right. Step six, educate and upskill. Educate and upskill. So I said this in step five, maybe invest in some hand-to-hand -hand combat classes. That's educating and investing in yourself. Yeah? Maybe go to situational awareness driving. Yeah? Know your space. Know your space. I think if, any, if we could focus on anything something to do with teaching us about situational awareness something to do that opens our minds about our space and the people around us and how to be aware because that is something a lot of people lack including me and i cry work on it over and over every day i'm working on it like today i stood and was looking through the binos at something i was like hmm, i wonder if that's been there before which is a stick sticking out of the ground far away that I'm sure I would have seen before. But maybe I didn't. Maybe I did. So now I'm questioning myself. Not a clever plan because maybe it is new. Yeah? And maybe it's a sign for the bad guys of a new path or something. And now I can't remember if I've seen it before. Situational awareness. So, you know, things we need to be aware of. So if we educate and upskill ourselves, what you're doing when you start a little garden you're going to grow one thing, grow two things. Grow. Before you know it, you're growing a handful of things and you're being driven. Why? Because it's exciting. So you're upskilling yourself. You, know? you start a small solar system. Before you know it, you're fiddling, you're touching. What are you doing? You're educating yourself. You're growing. It's normal. Oh, I'm quite into this. Oh, check. Oh, look. If I fiddle, oh, if I buy, oh, look it. There's a cool thing on the market. If I take that and I add it to here and here, I can do X, Y, and Z. Before you know it, you are thinking de-stress the system you are thinking hey what if i before you know it you're becoming self-sustainable oh. and that leads me to step seven grow grow more food <laughs> grow your solar system grow your water storage grow your food storage grow your circle grow your knowledge grow 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 anyway <laughs> That was quite cool. Bundy Bears is out.